Hello art friends. The time has come for a room tour. It is time. Alright, so this side of the room here is a dedicated studio space for my boyfriend for him to work on his music. Alright. Got some artwork. A little piff action. A little RTJ action. They're one of our favorite groups. <clears throat> um, to give you a pan of my side of the studio, I take up a bigger portion. <laughs> um, the reason I wanted to do a studio tour or a room tour video is you know, not for the bragging aspect, but I love watching videos that others have made on their workspaces. It's just really cool to see where people create their art. Um, you know, the way they organize their things, and I just, I love all that. So I wanted to share my space with you guys. Alright, so we're going to start over here. Um, this mass of craziness is just random supplies that I use with the munchkin to make art. We have this tower right here. This will start at the top. <clears throat> this is all of my bottle caps. Um, everything I use to create them. These are the ones that are up in my shop, my store envy shop. The information is down below. It's listed as handmade. Um, Guardians fan art stickers and magnets. This right here is how I organize the tops and the bottoms when I'm doming them. Um, I use this to stabilize to drill. Here we have some that are already put together and painted a uh, base color of black so that they can be painted on top of. I think these ones are ones that have not been domed yet but they've been sanded. And these are all domed. And uh up in my shop also. And in this bin right here is the findings and a bunch more caps that have already been done. Um, some of them just need holes drilled in them. A chain. I think there's some gears underneath there. It's a little dark. <laughs> uh, ring bases and more odds and ends and beads for the uh, bottle creation. Alright, let's toss that back in there. Alright, next drawer is felt and embroidery floss. And I do like to keep things kind of organized, so some of the needles are in here. My fabric shears. This is basically what's left of my sewing supplies um, after I did the uh, minimalist versus clutter chat and draw video I kind of went through everything and well I, I had to reshoot this video because <laughs> I went through and I donated a bunch of stuff and I sold a bunch of stuff that I wasn't using but this guy made it through the cut <laughs> I do like making felt creations it's you know just fun and relaxing and you know, just awesome to be able to give something like that away to friends. There's all the embroidery floss, another pair of scissors, some needles. On to the next drawer! Ah, junk. So much junk. Um, I, I got rid of a lot of this stuff, and there's still at least one full drawer of junky stuff. Um, ceramic stuff, corks, feathers, old cassettes, containers. Um, which this will be shown in a video that I'm working on. Um, this is all filled with metal bits and pieces for a turtle that I'm turning all steampunk. This container has glass files in it for, for another project. This drawer sticks quite a bit and... Oops, sorry. So this is all filler material for the felt creations. It's a polyfill. It's a roll of old webbing. And this is... Uh, what's left of my costume from, I think it was two years ago, I was going to do a female Too Faced. I'll insert picture here of my hair.
and of course the makeup. Um, I did not take a picture of the full costume, unfortunately. <clears throat> Ooh. Sorry for the jerky, jerky camera. All right. The distraction box, where I like to stream videos from Twitch and YouTube of all my favorite YouTube people. Um, down here is all the extra stuff from my Mac. There's an external drive, power cord, and a mouse. This box is batteries and other electronic doodads. I don't know if you can see in there. It's not really that interesting. There's also an old crappy GoPro that does not work. Um, this is my doming stuff right here. The wrapping block. Just so you guys can see it. It's awfully heavy. Trying to get that down with one hand is not going to work. Um, some randomness that, well, you know, randomness. Old tablet, uh, mallet, and a saw, drill kit for my, or pieces that go to that doohickey right there. <laughs> my electronic screwdriver, uh, rechargeable. Uh, screwdriver toolbox, obvious what's in there. Bunch of tools, I don't think you guys want to see that. Down here is this blue case that, if I can pan around to the front, has all these little drawers and they're all filled with beads and other little findings. Some flocking material. Um, there's a lot in there. Here is the turtle that I'm working on with all that wondrous metal bits. Lint roller because I have a cat and a doge and often need to clean myself before I come in the studio because I'm allowed in here. Behind the distraction box is fixatives, uh, lubricating spray, spray adhesive, another mallet, my old Mac, which I do not use, um, a deer that I have not hung back up. It's one of those cardboard things. All right bucket of yarn of projects that I was in the middle of working on when I'm not drawing. Bowl of randomness. This is a plastic organizer piece that goes to my desk, which you guys will see. A little felt creation. All right, first shelf. Electronic stuff. Yes. There is one of those doodads for heating up candles or cups of tea. Uh, glue guns, I have two of them. Underneath the glue guns is more glue sticks and an engraver. This right here is my soldering tool slash blowtorch, the fuel for that. And this guy right here is one of those hole punch doodads. All right. Next on the shelf are my felt bracelets that are up in my shop. So anytime one sells, I just come over, grab one out of here, and ship it. Super cute. Alright, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Fimo. Got some Vaseline, some cutters. I don't use my Fimo a whole lot, but enough that I did not get rid of it. This is a 3D viewer, or a VR viewer that I made that I need to fix because it doesn't have the right depth on it from the instructions. This is just a stack of cardboard pieces. If you guys um, have watched my paint along video, you've seen that I recommend using cardboard when you're first starting out and practicing. I think it's good for anybody. It's a quick and cheap canvas idea. Alright, this bucket used to have all of my um, extra screen printing stuff in it. It had t-shirts and extra screen pieces and other stuff. Now it just has a pair of shoes that I'm going to paint with some Doctor Who stuff. Um, some of those things for <laughs> embroidery, embroidery hoops. Um, my sunglasses case, an umbrella, and this looks like a yeah, little Star Wars container. All right, next shelf. This is what is left of what I kept of my screen printing fabric craziness. Um, it's just a couple tubes of fabric paint because I find this is really cool to use and my mixed media stuff because it has a nice texture to it. I kept a couple um, fabric markers. Up here is 
plastic baggies for shipping out my stuff that I make. In here is tape. So much tape. Um, this container, I just want to mention it because I'm all about recycling and reusing. It's a container, it's cardboard, it has a metal bottom. I know that's not the most interesting thing, but these were um, from a place that I worked a few years ago. They used to have them on the counter and they had, um, each container had a picture of what the product was inside and it was their product of the month. So I just painted them and I kept them and you'll see them throughout the entire room. There's a ton of them. I didn't wanna see it all get trashed. All right, um, this is a piece that I started on a while ago and I'm actually motivated to finish it. Another painting that's in process, obviously dry now, a set of tarot cards. In this bin, I'm not gonna pull them all out, but they are bicycle seat covers that are hand crocheted in different sizes for different bike seats. Um, this is actually empty. <laughs> um, it had the embroidery floss in it, which I moved to the drawer when I got rid of all my sewing stuff. In this container, it has epoxy um, mold making stuff, more plastic bags, label maker, label maker tape. And right here we have my bamboo stress relieving paint pad. Does not have water in it right now because I wouldn't want to dump it over accidentally. All right, third shelf. I'm not that tall, but hopefully you guys can see my Tupperware monkey. The bin right behind it is another one of those salvaged containers spray painted black and in it is all sorts of knitting needles. All right, Boba Fett's dad, my Boba Fett helmet that myself and my friend's ex-husband created. Underneath it is a styrofoam head. If you're seeing some weird face underneath here, that's what that is. My Boba Fett that my friend got me and Greedo, the munchkin, and my boyfriend got me. And the container next to that has all sorts of sticky paper types. Contact paper, iron-on paper, some cork, some chalkboard, sticker paper. All right, let's move down here. Container of junk that I like to see and look at. I do have a couple of these. Um, container behind that is what is left of my Sharpies that I went through and donated to the local art group. There is my first attempt at pouring for acrylic pours. Um, on the camera right now it's looking quite a bit darker than it actually is, but it is a metallic green, teal, and purple, like a bluish purple, and a little bit of a reddish purple in there. All right. Alright, a jar of keys. These have come from all over the place. When I used to do swaps on SwapBot, um, my partners would send me random keys. I thought it was cool. Eventually I will get around to creating a project with all of them. Alright, colored pencils. I think these are all pretty much Prang and Briol. Colored pencils that I've had forever. Let's see. Yeah. Um, what I noticed with the Prang pencils is they're actually, um, there's different sets of them and some of them are wax based. So that was a really good find. They're super cheap and they were, you know, I'm not big on colored pencils so they're pretty cool. All right, there is my arm and eye. Comes in handy quite a bit. Another one of those jars. This one has uh, more of a electronic theme to it. All right, down here, my vault Tech lunchbox. Inside of here, I don't want to get too in-depth, but it's just random pens, backup pens um, for when the ones in my cup holder need to be replaced, highlighters, my king markers that I used to do tags all over with. It's the last out of a pack that I had from like 1997. Ooh, so long ago. All right, this is the box to my bobble head. Back here is some rubbing alcohol Mod Podge. The Go Gear container has baby oil in it for colored pencils, and Elmer's rubber cement that I was using for masking fluid. This lunchbox, which you can see there's a slight difference here in size, <laughs> is the original that came with the game. And inside of this box, the original stuff that came in it, minus the bobblehead, which is on my desk. All right, paintbrushes. 
all different kinds of paintbrushes, acrylic, watercolor, oil, even though I don't really much do oil. A little Boba Fett action. And behind that is sponges, palette knives, and big wider brushes. Next shelf has some odd sized canvases that I couldn't figure out another place to put them. So they're in here. This is a light box back here. This is actually a Pip-Boy. Um, I don't have both hands free to open it up. Here are the sketchbooks from my last video that I just got. Um, some mailers, another screen protector from my phone in there. It's down there. Um, these little cardboard guys that I use for mailing out. Huge sketchbook. This thing is enormous. Takes the whole length of the shelf. Um, I think that one's from like 1996 or 1997. Still haven't finished it yet. I'm not a huge fan of sketchbooks. <laughs> I think you guys know that if you've seen my other videos. Alright, in this container there's all sorts of stuff for printer comic books from when I made comic book wallets, origami paper, um, shrinky dinks. I got everything in here. Alright, next bin. This one is all the stuff that I am currently working on. Um, any kind of practice sheets. That was the furthering of my testing out of the polycolor colored pencils from Koei Noor. Um, sketches for projects that I'm working on, commission pieces, stuff that I currently finished that has not been put away yet. This box right here has all sorts of nerdy doodads, little bric-a-brac type stuff. I think in here is some coins from other countries that have been given to me either from family members or friends. I've got some little Kirby's. Oh, Seattle pencil sharpener. Not a huge fan of pencil sharpeners either, so it's kind of just to look at. Some D and D stuff. Some containers with you know things that I, I have collected over the years, just little bits of memorabilia. Okay, this one is pretty self-explanatory. ATC paper, scrapbooking stuff. Underneath that is mementos, similar to what's in the black box, but the flat versions. Like from concerts and movies and stuff like that that should go in a scrapbook but have not quite gotten there yet. Alright, this container right here has sketchbooks and folders of work that I have finished recently. Sketchbooks that I had from middle school and high school after I uh, did like a little video just in case I want to do um, a sketchbook video. Alright, this is older stuff. This is from, oh, a lot of this I think is from screen printing. It's stencils. Some of it is from my graffiti work. Um, they're pretty large stencils. Oh, I'm going to go through all of it. Um, tracing paper. This looks like grid paper and some carbon paper. Down here is uh, scrapbooking papers. And I think old magazines from Juxtapose. This is important papers. These two right here are portfolios that I'm working on. Um, got some books in here. Origami book, face painting book, some comic books, my Dali book. This right here is my signed Max book. I got to meet Peter Max <laughs> and have him sign my Land of the Yellow book. I think this was... um either my mom's or my aunt's when they were younger and I ended up with it so I feel pretty lucky. Alright, this container right here, I'm not going to pull it out because it is god awfully heavy, is books for embroidery stitches. Um, I think it's iron-on imagery from like the 60s and the 70s. I think there's a couple guitar books in there also. Old license plate from forever ago. Um, box of junk that needs to go back in the closet. These are two books of coasters. I'm sure for the older people you know exactly what I'm talking about. For the younger people, you probably don't know what these are. They're CDs! Woohoo! Got two books of them. I got about an inch of dust on them. I haven't used them in a while. Alright, these right here are stands that were for nail polish, but I'm using them for um, the bottle caps when I do art walk. <clears throat> All 
Alright, so further down here is my easel in that little black bag. Right next to it is a tripod. That pole right there I use for this tripod when I'm filming. <laughs> when I want to do my overhead shot, I just put the pole in and attach the camera at a downward angle so that it films. Aha! Uh -huh. um, some canvases, another uh, drawing board. These are behind that so is my closet door, purse, guitar bag. Let's see. Should I show you in here? I guess so. All right. Box of important papers, picture frames, box of, oh, that's uh, printer ink replacements. The container right underneath it with the blue lid is light bulbs. And that bottom drawer there is extra paper and cardboard pieces. That is a drawer of blue, purple, greens, and yellow yarn. My cool yarn, <laughs> warm yarn. And then this yarn right here is all my neutrals, black, white, gray, brown, beige. The one single drawer of fabric that I kept, this entire thing was filled with fabric before I did my haul away. So that's fabric, that's the dreaded scrapbooking drawer. That one has other canvases that, um, the ones that were on my shelf didn't fit into this drawer. Right above that is girly stuff. It is purses, wallets, things that I am not ready to get rid of. One purse that needs to be fixed, it's in there. On the back of the door here we have a computer bag. Over here in the corner, whoop, embroidery. Um, I guess it's thread or yarn. No, not embroidery, sorry, crocheting thread for making little amaguris, which I do quite a bit of. All right, over here in the corner is some containers that I'm no longer using that I just threw in here to store. Deep in there is tall, big, huge cardboard pieces and canvases. This little black thing right here, which I know just looks like a gap of space. That is my art portfolio. Over here there's more canvases, some picture frames. Up in the top, you can probably read that. It says, what even is a VHS? It's a box of my boyfriend's VHS tapes. Above the VHS tapes is a little um, projector box. Those are mailing uh, um, envelopes. The green container has stickers and more envelopes. The orange container has photos. This is a bucket of plaster of Paris. Right underneath that is clay. And then next to that is just a bunch of boxes <laughs> for all the other electronic stuff. I do tend to keep boxes until the warranty runs out just in case. Alright, right here next to my desk is one of my prints from 13th floor. They have amazing artwork. You guys should go check them out. They do a very cool Star Wars um, World War II mashup collection. This piece right here is from Neems on DeviantArt. I, I just fell in love with it. I love Burnsy. Um, this is a doll. I know it has an actual name for the type of doll it is, but it's felt and it's supposed to be Frida. She's missing her double brow. Uh, CD of my boyfriend's band. My welcome to Amazon paperwork. <laughs> um, more randomness. I uh, tend to keep anything that I'm working on or any, you know, important papers up here. Alright, the desk. It's a mess. You can see that it's glass. See-through. Tissues. My surface. My vape. My phone. My to-do list. The chair. Underneath here we have my external hard drive. That container, I could open it and show you guys, it's just a bunch of matte board, uh, watercolor uh, press board. That little brown box underneath it, it's all nail polish. This box right here, I can show you what's in this one. Wood panels, uh, Bristol that I put together. This is a project that she'll be coming soon, guys. It's for Inktober. I already have it set up and ready to go. Um, these are flat panel canvases. Oh, that's another acrylic pour that I did. Ooh. Yeah, not not so great at that just yet. All right, my Paris paper for pens. I love that paper for markers. Canson XL watercolor paper that I use quite often. Printer paper, cardstock. Heavy, I think this is technically resume paper. It's very thick um, printer paper. And then regular printer paper. And I'm not sure what. Oh, more cardstock. That's 
different brand of cardstock. All right, and this paper right here came from the IP Paper Mill in Ticonderoga, New York. Yeah, I've had that for a very long time. It really goes to show how much I actually print on my printer when it's not art prints. <laughs> All right, this is a shade for a lamp that I was making. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it when I first came in, but there's one up there. These were inserts for um, e-liquid containers, and I repurposed them. All right, on the desk, this is a package that needs to go out. My glasses, book, pen. This is the old container for a blowtorch and the refill. I used to keep my paintbrushes in here. Right now it doesn't have anything in it. Um, I was going to repurpose it. I think the last thing that was actually in there might have been zippers before I got rid of all my sewing stuff. Um, we have some e-liquid, candle and a lighter. This container, although it looks like junk, is the glove that I used to open up my thing. Some lotion, eyeglass fixing kit, nail file, some putty for stress relief, my allergy medicine, which I do use daily. I'm not stressed. Alright, this lamp is not functioning. It's just a holder for my my actual clip-on light. Alright, very small sketchbooks here that I can grab and use as I need. This one is a mixed media journal. And that's just a pad of paper. Some prints of my art. This one is toned paper. This one is my vellum book from Chart Pack. This is a 3D drawing pad just for fun. I think this is Strathmore. Yep, mini watercolor. Um, this one is not one of my favorites, guys, but a friend of mine. So it's just, yeah, it's got this cool painting and it has lined paper. Ugh, not a huge fan of that, but eh, I figured I'd use it. All right, so we got some Yupo paper. Um, I think that's a notepad. All right, so we are now on the desktop. Um, this is my water for my paint brushes. This is repurposed. This actually attaches to the desk right here on the sides. And it's supposed to hold, I guess, pencils and, you know, things that you would need on your desk. But because I have a bad habit of picking up the water glass that's for rinsing off paint brushes. Um, this was a much better option. Plus I have three, you know, bins for water. So I have my water for wetting my palette, for adding water, and then washing the brushes. Um, uh, let's take a look up here on the desktop. Let's see, I already got some stuff. This is out of my pencil case. Um, this is Actually, I'm going to put this in a video, how I made this, but we'll start up here. A little picture frame, bobblehead. These are my fine liners and, you know, just markers, I guess. I try to keep them all together. This container and the one down below I will talk about in a second. Memory cards, an ATC from Art Across the Miles group. It's absolutely one of my favorite ATCs that I've gotten. Um, I created like a little makeshift frame for it so it could stand up on its own. This is my McPherson blind box toy that I made a cool little diorama of sorts. Um, cactus that I can't kill, bobblehead from Fallout 3, another blind box toy. And these are all uh, blind box toys that I put into a shadow box. You can see the depth of this thing. And the other dude out up there is for my tablet for playing games. We're going to drop down here. Sonic screwdriver. Fallout 3 blind box toy. This bin right here has gouache. This is the Reeves gouache. Um, back here, some acrylica gouache. I think this is core watercolor. And these are my Grumbacher uh, watercolors that I just got. If you guys check out my Facebook page for Mia Vox Arts, um, I put a post up about how I got those. 
Uh, this right here has my ATC stuff, replacement nibs for my markers, um, small UFO paper that came out of Art Snacks, of course, Art Snacks sticker. And then I'll just pan across this real quick. These are all Touch 5 markers. You can see some of them have black dots on them. They're ones that are needing refills. Um, this whole entire purple organizer was actually a display unit from my previous job. <laughs> they were going to toss it in the trash and I kept it to recycle it. It used to be red. You can see deep in there it's still kind of red. <clears throat> I just spray painted it purple. And these little cardboard pieces I set up for dividers so each pen will fit in its own little area. Some Copics. These are Promark Promarkers. Um, pads of paper, some washi tape, some regular tape, batteries for my vape, my contacts lens case, mom. <laughs> Alright, in this drawer right here we have some swatches of the Zig color markers, some watercolor pencils, one Winsor & Newton watercolor marker. Um, this came from a giveaway on uh, Doodle Wash. I don't know if you guys have been on that website, but for the whole month of July they were giving away uh, different samples of products. They were also doing giveaways um, for all sorts of different watercolor stuff. And I was chosen for the Winsor & Newton. It's actually a pretty uh, decent watercolor brush. It doesn't work well on a lighter weight watercolor paper, but it's still pretty cool. Um, these are all the Zig color markers. I do have a video on the review on that and uh, tips and how to for watercolor markers if you guys want to go check that out. Ooh, struggling here a little bit. Swatch sheets are definitely important. Alright, next drawer is uh, Holbein Gouache. This is just a set of mixing colors. I got the small one to test them out. These are actually super awesome gouache. Got some tissues, some masking fluid, um, syringes with blunt tips. These are for splashing rubbing alcohol and water onto my watercolor paintings. Also have droppers, um, watercolor brush sponge, and brush cleaner. Next drawer is just random office stuff. Um, clips, sharpener, you know, staples, all sorts of doodattery. All right, next on the desk, paint brushes. These are the brushes that I use most often. I do tend to swap out here and there with the ones on the other side of the room. Pencil case, this roll up usually goes in the pencil case. So what's left in there right now is just a couple pencils from the Winchell factory in Ticonderoga, New York. Um, a ruler and some rubbers, some erasers. That's pretty much it. I think there might be a tiny pencil sharpener in there too. Alright, next is this guy. It's holding graphite, charcoal, small set of scissors, some Stadler liners that I've had for ages, and a bunch of stylus, um, which I don't really use these anymore. They're for my old tablet. I have a Surface Pro now. I could still use this one, but I don't. This uh, wooden pencil holder I got at Hobby Lobby, and you can put different pictures in the front of it. And when I got it, it comes in several pieces. It's one that you uh, do it yourself. You put it together. So I got this one and that one for I think maybe like 50 cents. It was such a good buy. Um, if I needed more pencil holders I probably would have bought more of them but I thought two was good enough. I didn't really need that many. It would have been good to have another one for my brushes though. Maybe I'll swap those out and that'll be my brush holder. Alright, next we have my palettes. Um, we'll go ahead and open them up for you. This is my gouache. This is the basic colors for the Reeves gouache. If I can get it open. 
There we go. So this was basically just out of the tube, and you can see I've mixed in the lid. This is a Jerry Q watercolor set from Amazon. I do not recommend this, even if you're a beginner and you just want to test the waters. That's what I got it for. Um, you can see these are all dry. They're dry. But if you rub them, you can see my finger is now blue. They're very waxy. Um, they kind of feel like these were like the inside of colored watercolor pencils. Um, so once you watercolor with them and it dries, it leaves this awful chalky residue and it smudges your artwork. Um, this little section here, this is all the uh, Grumbacher watercolor, the three colors, and I kind of blended my own. So I've been using that mostly for the Grumbacher watercolors. This is my temporary palette for the Holbin. This was just kind of a test it out and see because I got the primary set. Um, I was mixing my own colors to see how they all came out. This is my custom gouache palette, um, which hopefully the whole band will look like this one soon, if I can get this sucker open. There we go. So, those colors look a little bit different than they do in real life through the camera, but you guys got a pretty good idea. So I have my custom palette, my basics palette. I do write on them and I have stickers and all sorts of stuff just so I know which one is which so I don't have to spend time opening and closing. I have a little picture holder here um, so I can put my sketches and uh, reference, my reference material so I can have it standing up so I can take a look at what I'm working on if I have reference. Alright, this is some origami stuff. I'm working on these little itty bitty tiny guys. I don't know if that's going to focus or not, but these little, yeah, there we go. Little origami guys. And I'm going to be doing a, a little like terrarium type jar thing. It's my elephant uh, drawing board is my base. I also have a cutting mat here which I actually do use for cutting stuff on. It's not just a fancy background. And then I have my cactus terrarium which looks like it's needing some help in there. Um, I started this November of last year and I haven't killed them all yet so I'm pretty proud of that guys. I am without the green thumb. <laughs> I have pretty black thumb. Alright, so this container over here, we can focus. All the sharp pointy stuff, X-Acto knife, um, magnifying glass, scissors, rulers, hole punch. Next one is all of my jewelry making type tools. Little mini screwdrivers, mini hand drill other little bits and pieces and this bottom drawer if I can get it to open is my swatch sheets for my gouache I have them on different mediums different paper types this is the watercolor swatch sheet that I have for the Jerry Q I don't know if you guys can see that on camera but it's very waxy alright swatch book is just standard index card book. What I did was all the pa different paper types that I tested on, I just taped them in on the uh, index cards. A little composition book. These are for my ATCs. Another index card book. And a chart for mixing paint. That back in here. <clears throat> all right, so the bin over here has all the stuff that I use for filming, camera case, stuff like that, um, clips for holding down artwork. Well, and if we go over here.
Then on my pegboard, I have some various art pieces, a little Yoda, some clockwork orange, um, the first ATC that I did for Grumbacher, very cool, a um, little Buddha that someone sent me. And we got some pins, and then another ATC from the Grumbacher art swap, then an ATC. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, my old swap group and then a postcard from Timid Lion if you guys haven't been to his page you should pop over there go check out his YouTube channel he does some pretty awesome videos and then I have this lovely flyer from a Zen event that was here in Florida and down here are some pins from way back when I worked at GameStop um, this guy right here is actually from Endor Finders if you guys haven't checked out Endor Finders for all your 501st needs, you should. I got a little Triforce and the Princess. Alright. So, we should probably go down below my desk. A spindle of coasters. <clears throat> or, um, as us old folks call them, CDs. My paper cutter, another cutting mat, some rulers. In here I have a stapler, tape, pencil case, uh, thumbtacks for my tack board. I also have uh, paper clips, another circular ruler, stamp and ink. This actually shrank. Um, I got to pull all the stuff off my desk that was junking it up and put it in here because this used to be stamps, ink, and wire. But I donated a bunch of it to an art group. So I kept one black ink, and then I kept my watermark pad, um, two greens and a yellow, and my favorite, most favorite stamps that I use most often. I have some gum arabic, and um, powdered pigments, and erasers for carving my own uh, stamps, and of course, right here, cutting tool for cutting the stamps. Next one is all of my wire and chain for making chain mail. Not that interesting. Oh, but down just a little bit further is sticky stuff, glues and tape. And I have sewing supplies. This is all that's left from all of the stuff that I had. Uh, I'm pretty proud that I've contained it down to one drawer. So I have all my sewing needles, I have some thread, I have a roll or two of um, Velcro, elastic, some ribbon um, in the Altoids can as a travel set of sewing stuff. Down here was a bunch of um, chalk pastel and oil pastels, but now you can see I have my koh uh drawing sets. Uh, these are some texture sheets for doing rubbings on paper. This is a set of Sargent Lecture School Pastels. These were, um, I don't know if these are my grandmother's, my great-grandmother's, or one of my, my aunts or my mom's, but I ended up with them, and I use them every once in a while. And because I got rid of all my other pastels, I did keep those ones. This box has a bunch of graphite and charcoal pencils in it. I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but you can see there's a bunch of different kinds. I even have some Prang, some Stanford. I have a Canada pencil in there. Just a bunch of craziness. I also have some uh, Quotions. Um, I guess people would call them like uh, blending sticks or smudge sticks. Some Liquitex ink, Higgins ink, a spray bottle, toothbrush, those kind of give you a similar effect of squirting and spraying. I have some fixative, which is nothing more than travel hairspray. Conte crayons. Uh, this is my go-to, so I don't have to use pencil sharpener. I can just cut it down. Let's see, it's some dip pen nibs, dip pen, and some more eyedroppers. Oops, that's about what's in there. Let's put this back in there. 
All right, next set of drawers. There is two drawing pads from Koinor, and underneath those are two sets of oil pastels that I have not used, but I am considering doing a giveaway once I hit 100 um, subs on this channel. So hopefully I have more stuff to add to that before I hit 100. Next drawer, you can already see into it, is acrylic paints. These are random assortment of acrylic paints, um, texture tools, I have some Van Gogh, uh, Liquitex, and um, I did, just like my gouache, I put a little dab on the top so I know which colors they are. The blacks I just left blank, because I know I have two of those. Um, these tubes are pretty obvious to see into, to know what color they are. I have some Liquitex Basics, I have some Van Gogh, uh, I think I have some Dollar and Rowney. Um, this one I think is from Hobby Lobby, just some randomness. Gesso, uh, clear varnish. I have some texture paints in here from Blick. Some gel medium. Uh, a couple refills for Copics. These two are Dollar and Rowney. And I have some Grumbacher acrylic paints that I've had for a little while. And I have I think, just two tubes of oil uh, paint from Windsor and Newton. I'm not much into oil painting, but eh, well, you never know. I might get into it. These are old floppy disk holders that I kept, put white in the bottom of them, uh, and use them for palettes. And I have some lids that I also use as palettes see-through in this container. I used to have all of my um, jump rings in it because it has different compartments, but I found that when I'm using acrylics, it's nice to use this because the lid can go on it while I'm waiting for the painting to dry. My paints won't dry out. Um, this one I kept in case I wanted to make a travel palette. It used to have screws and other little things in it. And all of this is craft paint. And these Cardboard containers actually came from my very last job. Uh, E-liquid got shipped out in them, and instead of dumping them in the dumpster, I kept a bunch of these so that I'd have organizers. And these used to be stacked up on my shelves, and this drawer used to be my junk drawer. And that one had a bunch of screen printing stuff. stuff in it, and that one had all of my felt in it. So everything's been shifted around. Um, some more plastic palettes. I have some knives for scraping paint off said palettes. All right. Epson Workforce 7, 7610. It's huge. It's an enormous beast. It prints up to 11 by 17 which is the reason I got it. The scanner bit on this thing is also enormous, so I don't have to worry about um, having to segment pieces. As long as it's in that frame of size, I can uh, scan it, which is awesome. And then we have some Epson printer paper for my prints. And, uh, yeah, so we're here on the floor. <laughs> So that's about it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and taking a look at all of my craziness and checking out my workspace. Um, if you guys put up a workspace video or a room tour video, I would love to see it. Why don't you link me down below or leave me a message letting me know to go to your page to check yours out. Alright guys, I will see you in the next video. Have an awesome week.